Well, student, uh, in previous period, we have uh, seen the poem Amanda and uh, you have understood better. So today we will uh, have certain revision of the poem, what exactly happened from the beginning to end. And then we will go with the literary devices. So what happened first, uh, if you will see stanza uh, wise, so what happened first, a little girl Amanda is biting her nails. That, uh, that was the first incident. Then her mother asked her not to do so. Okay. Then third, Amanda is putting her shoulder down. Uh, then again, there, is a, there was a rejection of her mother. So that was in the first, her mother asked her to lift up her shoulders and adopt the right posture that we have seen in the first stanza. Then there is a languid ambulance and then she went into the uh, film imagination, right? She went into the imagination. She was thinking that uh, she is alone in that particular uh, sea, which is, uh, which has the metaphor of the emerald sea, right? Emerald means what? Uh, like green color is one of the gems, right? And then where a soul inhabited means only she is there and she is looking like a mermaid. Mermaid means what? A creature uh, who has uh, upper body like girl and uh, lower body is like a uh, you know aquatic uh, creature, that is fish. Then again there was a certain question by her mother that Amanda, uh, did you finish your homework Amanda? Then did you tidy your room Amanda? So another questions were there, many questions were there. I thought I told you to clean your shoes as well. So these, uh, these were uh, many questions by the Amanda's mother to her. Then again she uh, went in the imagination, uh, field of imagination. She said that I am orphan girl and she is roaming like a, uh, any you know, free bird. Uh, then pattern of dust she was doing in the sand with the bare fitted. Actually, uh, in the actual existence, she could not do that. So she is imagining that. And what she says, she has um, said the metaphor that silence is golden and freedom is sweet that she has told. Again, in the third stanza, we have seen, don't eat the chocolate, Amanda. Remember your acne, Amanda. And then will you uh, please look at me when I'm speaking to you, Amanda. Again, many questions were there from, the, uh, from her mother, Amanda, that chocolate should not be eaten by you or uh, you have acne, so maybe uh, because you are in teenage, uh, so we should not e uh, eat that, otherwise again pimples will come. Okay, but because of the excess uh, oil, you have uh, to face that pimples and all, because um, you are a girl and you have to maintain your thing, maintain your many things, and this is the code of conduct of the society. Then again, uh, she went into the, uh, her imagination world, and she said, I am, uh, uh, Rapunzel, I am not a uh, care. Life is tall, is tranquil and rare. I will certainly never let down my bright hair. And she says that I am not now here. I am like the uh, Rapunzel. Rapunzel means I told that one of the princes. Okay, fairy tale. It was described here by the poetess. And uh, uh, she is locked in one of the to uh, tower, uh, which was she was captured by the witch uh, that she has said. And what she said. I want to uh, live there lonely, so I will not let my hair down. As, as we have learned yesterday in this previous lecture, that um, uh, Rapunzel was one of the fairy, and she used to put her hair down, and then uh, when uh, her um, beloved person used to come there, and which also used to come there. But now she don't want to allow anyone there. She doesn't want to allow anyone there. She doesn't want to allow her mother as well. And in the last stanza of the poem, we have seen that that. Uh, when uh, all this torturing thing happens with them, Amanda, and then she, uh, no, she remained very unhappy, un, uh, upset. So that time uh, her mother says, stop that sulking at once, Amanda. Uh, you are always so moody, Amanda. Anyone would think that I nagged at you, Amanda. And then uh, mother urged her, don't be upset. Otherwise, others always think that I'm just torturing you. I'm making you upset. I'm making you cry. So that should not be there, that is why you just uh, keep quiet, don't, uh, don't cry, don't be upset. That's what all we uh, have seen in this poem. And we have seen that uh, how Amanda has certain negativity about her mother, about her family members. And why uh, mother was behaving like that? Because she uh, wants to uh, follow by the Amanda, the code of conduct of society. She doesn't want that, her mother doesn't want that, uh, my uh, daughter should not become spoiled uh, kid in the society, in the measurement of the society. Because there are certain norms of the society where certain measurements are there, then we can understand that uh, this particular child is very uh, 
गुड वन वेरी प्रॉपर चाइल्ड दैट सी वॉन्ट दैट इज वाई सी वॉज टॉर्चरिंग टू अमेंडा so that's what we have seen the whole poem and yesterday i have conveyed one message to also you that uh, how uh, we should not uh, you know that blame our parents or blame our elder was because they are thinking good about us right so today we are going to learn uh, more thing about the poem we have seen the theme uh, we have seen the summary of the poem right now also we have taken uh, a glance at uh, this whole poem the summary of the poem now we will see that certain uh, uh, poetic devices are used here okay we'll see that uh, one by one what exactly the devices are so first one is uh, anaphora already we have learned that uh, anaphora uh, literary devices in the ball poem anaphora means what uh, repeated use of word at the start of the consecutive two lines okay that uh, those uh, anaphora is, are used here in this poem we'll see that one by one as soon as the use of sound uh vowel repeatedly means for example we know that vowels are there a e i o u suppose the say a e i o u are repeatedly used in one one of the line then it can be uh, said as a an uh, assonance then metaphor you i don't to directly comparison with the one thing to another for example uh, you are lion of the class means one of the boy has been compared directly to the lion so like that example also we can see here uh, metaphor we have seen that example uh for example uh, silence is gold or um, freedom is sweet so directly it is compared or uh, emerald uh, sea ocean right now bring to the directly then uh, repetition with repetition of any word uh, if it is found in the poem it is called a repeated uh, repetition uh, literary devices or figure of speech we can say repetition means what any for example amanda 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 all the many times it is repeated in the poem then you can see alliteration any particular sound is repeated for example a sound will be uh, a not but uh, we can say a is repeated again and again or maybe s sound is repeated again and again means any sound is repeated again and again it is a alliteration then allusion means what use of the famous fairy tale character so we can uh, we know that it is a referential one character one fairy uh we have used here in this po in this poem poetry has used there references so allusion is there use of the famous fairy tale character and then last one uh, consonance so already we have run here assonance and then consonance what is the difference between these two assonance means use of vowel sound repeatedly and consonance means use of most of the time uses of uh, consonant sound repeatedly okay so this is the basic information about literary device i have define you what exactly figure of speech these are there and then we'll go one by one in the first stanza we can see don't bite your nails amanda don't hurt uh, your shoulders amanda stop that slouching and sit up straight amanda so don't bite and don't hurt so we can see here anaphora literary devices here because don't bite don't don't word is repeated in the consecutive two lines at the beginning not in the middle so what is the repeated use of the word at start of the two more lines so it is a anaphora literary device so we can understand anaphora is used here uh, in the first stanza don't bite your nails amanda and don't hunch your shoulder amanda okay then we can see stop that slouching and sit up straight so s sound is repeated so here alliteration any particular sound is repeated so stop that slouching and sit up straight so stop s the slouching s sit s and straight s so s sound is repeated so it is a alliteration literary devices then again amanda 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 right now so here amanda so repetition also we can see so amanda word is repeated again and again in this poem if we go in uh, another <coughs> uh, third sound did you finish your homework amanda did you tidy your room amanda so here did you again did you did you both the words are repeated in the two consecutive line at the beginning so again anaphora uh, literary device we can found here then we'll go further don't eat that chocolate amanda remember you are acne amanda so amanda is repeated uh, repetition we can understand ha huh, one more thing uh, remain here i am an orphan roaming the street i pattern soft dust with my hushed bare feet 
and the silence is golden silence is golden so silence is directly compared with the gold so we can understand here metaphor anything is directly compared to any other thing so it is a metaphor so uh, silence is gold gold here metaphor again freedom is sweet so freedom is compared to sweet things so metaphor devices are used here they will go further in the uh, next page i am rapunzel rapunzel means what again i told allusion use of the famous fairy tale character so it is used here it is been used here so it is a allusion okay when when in the poem any famous fairy tale character is used it is a allusion then life and tower tranquil and rare again here life in a tower tranquil and rare, rare. so tower r then tranquil r rare r so r sound is repeated so here consonant most of the use of the consonant sound repeated so which one r sound is repeated so it is consonants and assonance we will see one one example is there in the beginning assonance so where o sound is repeated for example i thought in the third sound you can understand i thought i told you thought o i to o told you o then to clean your your shoes so o is repeated in that line so it is a assonance okay so these all literary devices we have seen in this poem now we will see the rhyme scheme of the poem if you see don't bite your nails amanda don't hurt your shoulders amanda stop that slouching seat up straight amanda so you can understand don't bite your nails amanda a eh? don't bunch her hunch your shoulders amanda a eh? then stop that slouching and sit up straight here b because straight amanda and last one amanda again so it is a a a b a so what is the rhyme scheme in the first sentence a a b e a a b a then then there is a languid mrc where the sole inhabitant is me a mermaid drifting blissfully so all these three having e sound at the last okay so c me blissfully e so here c c c so almost in all stanzas there are uh, this is the rhyming scheme for the first um, stanza we can see a a b a and then the second stanza when he goes for the imagination that time the rhyming scheme is c c c okay so the overall in the whole poem uh, we can see this is the rhyming scheme so i hope that we have uh, understood this literary devices throughout the poem so mostly which devices are used here anaphora is used mostly then assonance means what again i repeat use of the vowel sound repeatedly vowel sound means which one then we can understand here vowel sound a a e i o and u suppose in any any line this a e i o u is repeated again and again so it is a assonance and after i told you that repeatedly any to uh, any word is uh, used repeatedly in consecutive two lines at the beginning but at the beginning then it is a anaphora then again i repeat metaphor i told you anything is directly compared with anything then one of the thing then it is called a metaphor repetition any word is repeated again and again again and again then it is a repetition then alliteration means any particular sound is repeated maybe b sound repeated maybe c sound repeated so c sound repeated means what word any um, word from the poem with that particular line is started with the same letter it is alliteration then allusion i told uh, use of famous fairy tale uh, character in the poem directly for example suppose uh, gautam buddha or sri krishna is used there but fairy tale ah huh? it is then uh, consonants means most of the uh, use of the consonant sound again and again in the poem then it is called a consonant means consonant and assonant assonant means called vowel sound repeated and consonant means consonant sound repeated so i hope that you have understood this all literary devices in the poem which we have used and also you have seen rhyme scheme a a b a and c c c so uh, you just write down these all examples in your notebook 
of the literary devices okay so i hope that uh, you understood very well this lecture thank you very much